One, two, three, go. You have your whole life to be taken. So my question is, why are you rushing into it? This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Yes, welcome to another episode of Cuentos with Hannah. Guys, love having you on the podcast. Today, we are going to talk about, well, let's let Bernadette tell you. Hi Hannah, this is Bernadette from the Philippines. Today, can we make cuento about the beauty of singlehood and not crushing our way into love? I wanted to talk about this because as I am staring outside my bedroom window, listening to cheesy love songs, I can't help but wonder if I am truly missing out on this so-called dating life. I always tell myself that I am not really bothered by it, but as I grew older, it seems like everyone around me is falling in love and finding the right person for them. Not to mention the pressure that comes from family and friends who keeps on asking why I don't have any boyfriend yet. I guess I just wanted to talk about it because I know that this is a common concern, especially to girls our age. I just want everyone to know that they are not alone in this journey. So yeah. Thank you so much, Bernadette, for that message. Um, You said a lot of things, and I do want to touch on a lot of things that you said, but I think my favorite thing that you said was that we are not alone and that you wanted to remind people that they were not alone and yes you are not alone if you are going through you know um the scrutiny of being single of being however years old and of not having a boyfriend when everybody else around you is having a boyfriend you are not alone bernadette's there with you i don't know if she has a boyfriend now i don't know but she was there with you i am here with you right now and so I just decided, you know, this would be a good time to talk about this topic. Well, many reasons. One is that Bernadette did ask that question, and it's a great question. You know, the beauty of singlehood and not rushing into love. And I've also released um, a new song, which is called All The Way. And a lot of people have been asking me, Hannah, what is that song about? It sounds like it's so deep. It sounds like it's so, like relatable it sounds like something happened in your life that you had to write that song and yeah a lot of them are actually true i mean everything that i mentioned yes is true so we are talking about love and i'm currently single at the moment and not rushing into it so how does this apply to the song that i just put out so my song that i just put out is called all the way i wrote it with rico blanco but i already had the chorus pre-written before I saw him so he reached out to Universal Records he asked him if I could write with him and if I can make a song with him and I was like yeah sure so I met him in his studio we were playing around with some notes and some chords and I was like you know I actually have this chorus that I've been wanting to sing and the lines are if you haven't listened to the song already you should but if you haven't yet the lines go why does it feel so right to walk away from you why doesn't it feel wrong to get over the things that we used to do and that that line was just like so real to me at the moment that I wrote it so it's crazy to think about it but my first song that I put out is called Nagbaba Kasakali it is a love song yes but I did not write it so it is not my words it is not my feelings it is not something that I went through the second song that I put out is called Limits and it was actually yes it's from hindsight, it is about love. It is about a relationship and a person that you don't want to be with anymore. But I wrote it to express my frustrations about school and how school was pushing its boundaries with me and how school was not being very nice to me and how sc- I just wanted to break up with school. <laughs> that was the context. And then the, ser- the third song that I put out is called Pagnanjan. And I wrote that with Daniela of Better Days. I wrote it with... Um, Soupstar, I wrote it with uh, Eunice from Grace Note. I wrote it with multiple people. We all just were kind of talking about general ideas and scenarios, and we made the song, Pagnanjan. But All the Way is actually the first song that I put out that is directly from an experience that I had. It, it is the first song that I'm putting out that is actually a song that I wrote when I was very vulnerable, when I really wanted to express myself about a situation that I was going through. It's the first song that is actually, like, me. So it's crazy to put it out there and for people to listen to it and to actually hear the words that I needed to say to feel heard. Like, it's it's crazy in my head to think about that, but... 
having said that, there's so many things that went into those lyrics that I don't think people are ever going to understand. And I don't want people to ever understand completely what I was going through at that moment. But it really ties in to a quote that my dad said. The whole reason for the song was a quote that my dad told me. He said, Hannah, if you're going to love this person, you have to love them all the way. And loving them all the way means doing not just what is best for you, but it's doing what's best for them. And at that time when I was writing the song, I liked this guy and I had, you know, really killing feelings and he was also super killing feelings, but it was a very momentary thing. It was like, yeah, we both know that this is not going to last. We both know that we're on separate paths in life and this is just not going to work. And so even if it sucked to have to say goodbye, even if it sucked to have to walk away, it was so worth it because I knew that I in that moment of so much weakness, saying no to him was actually loving him all the way. So yeah, that was the reason for the song. That was the sentiment behind the song. And it's still something that I hold on to now. I've written that song multiple years ago. It just came out now, but it was something that I experienced a few years ago. And it all... It all still resonates with me now because my decision not to have a boyfriend at the moment or not to allow other people to pursue me or to not get into a relationship prematurely is all rooted in the fact that if I'm going to love somebody, I'm going to do it with my whole heart and I'm going to commit to you 110%. And if you're not the one, I'm not going to waste my 110% on you. If you're not somebody that I want to spend the rest of my life with, I'm not going to spend my 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 hard-earned time. I'm not gonna spend, you know, my hard-earned money. I'm not gonna spend all of my emotions, my sleepless nights on you. And it's not like, wow, honey, you're so self-centered. Like you don't want to waste your time with someone. No, it it goes both ways. I also don't want to waste their time. I don't want to waste their emotions. I don't want to waste their money. Of course, the guy. I mean, they gotta pay for this, you know, the meals. But honestly, I don't want to waste his time. What if that time that I'm spending, you know, just entertaining the thought of being together in the future, but not actually, is the time that he was supposed to meet the girl of his dreams. But because he was so busy staring at me, he didn't see her. Like, I don't ever want that to be the scenario, you know? So the verse that I was holding on to when I said no to this guy was perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. And that's Philemon 1 verse 15. I completely took it out of context. This is a great example of how to take the Bible out of context. That does not apply anymore. Like, I don't anymore look at that guy in that perspective of like, okay, I'm saying you're naughty now, but in the future we'll be together. Like, no. But in theory, I still believe what that saying is saying, which is basically talking about a momentary sacrifice for a future gain. And that's exactly what it means to be waiting, waiting for the right one. That's what it means to be enjoying singlehood while you have the time to. I mean, it's exactly what I said in the first part of this podcast, you know. You have the whole, you have your whole life to be taken. You have your whole life to be somebody's wife, to be someone's husband. So why are you rushing into it? I mean, if you're doing it right, you know, when you get married to that person, that's the last time that you're going to be single. So take advantage of the time that you have, you know. So anyway, Philemon 1 verse 15 basically talks about how saying no now is saying yes to forever. And I believe that in terms of being in a relationship, saying no now as I make myself more mature as I grow in the Lord and my relationship with God, as I figure myself out as an individual, as I start my career, and as I better the relationships that I already have, saying no to pursuing another huge part of my life is actually honoring the yes that I eventually will say to that person. Because I want to give that person my all. I want to give that person, you know, the best version of me. So, 
<laughs> I have so much to say about this topic and I don't really know how to frame my thoughts. But basically, that's what All the Way was about. And it's still something that I live by now. If you're going to say yes to someone, you better be saying yes to forever. If you're going to say you love someone, you better know what love is first. And so what is love? I love this um, Bible verse that is from 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 8. And it says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. (laughs) And if I read this right now, and you ask me, Hannah, are you ready to love someone like this? I'm going to say no. (laughs) I don't know how to love somebody like this. And if this is love and I don't know how to love someone like that yet, please don't don't allow me to to pursue a relationship right now lord like that's my prayer it's like you will only ever understand what love is when you first understand how much you are loved like this and the only person that can love you with a complete and full and flawless love is god and and that's a revelation that I really got last year. You know, I was like, I was tired. I was I was restless. And yes, I was around a lot of people that were getting married, engaged, and with someone. I was in freaking Bible college, okay? Bible college, they also call it marriage college because everybody kind of gets married there, you know? Y- you're surrounded by so many Christian people, people that share the same faith, people that um, share the same likes and, and are in a, such a great, you know, environment to be with someone and so a lot of people are getting married and getting together and you're just like i'm so single (laughs) but that was where god really revealed to me how i could only ever properly love somebody if i understand how much god loved me and i can only understand how much god loves me when i finally kick everybody out of the pedestal that I put them in. There's this one pedestal in my life. There's there's one place in my heart that says God. It's like, you know, those theater seats and, and they're labeled of like for VIPs. Yeah, there's one seat that's labeled God and it's like gold plated and it's beautiful and stuff. But I allow other people to sit there. And I allow other people to satisfy me, to make me feel loved, to make me feel looked after, to make me feel, you know, like I'm seen and beautiful and adored. I allow those people to replace God in my life. Only God can love me like that. And yet I say to other people, nah, I'm fine with this. This guy could do it. (laughs) No, that guy can't do it. And it was only when I finally said, you know what? Fine. No more guys. <laughs> I'm not entertaining guys right now. When I said that, when I cleared the seat for God to sit down and to finally show me, to reveal to me, to explain to me, to show me how much he loved me, my gosh, my rush, my want to get there you know, to find that guy, to to settle down, it all disappeared because I was completely satisfied. I am right now completely satisfied with the amount of love and the the companionship of, of God. Like, But there's this paradox, you know, in the Bible. And and God is crazy. His ways are his ways. (laughs) They're not my ways. His his thoughts are his thoughts. They're not my thoughts. God works in ways that we can never understand and never explain. Which is great because, I mean, he's God. That's his role. And so there are many paradoxes. There are many things in the Bible that you can't really fully explain or understand or grasp. And that's completely fine. That's when faith kicks in. You know, if you if you understand everything, then you would never have to have faith. So 
there is this one paradox that is called the now and the not yet. And it applies to many things in the Bible, but I'm talking specifically in terms of gratitude and contentment. Right now, I am content. I am happy. I am satisfied. I am at peace with the love that God is pouring out to me. That's the now. But I still know in the back of my mind that God will fulfill his promise to me. That it's not good for man to be alone. And that he has reserved someone that is so amazing and that fulfills all of my hopes and dreams and desires for me in the future. Being content with now, but knowing that God has so much more for you in the future. That's kind of where I'm at. So we talked about a relationship with God, right? That's number one. That is the number one thing on the list that I have to tick off first. I have to be content, fully content with my relationship with God, understood that he is the number one in my life. Um, And I love that beautiful saying of God has to be so engraved in you and so linked to your identity and so deep in your heart that a guy has to find God first before he finds you. I love that. I love that so much. And in order for God to be so deep in my heart that the guy has to find God first before me. Well, I have to have a really great relationship with God first. And I think I'm working towards that. And I think, um, I think it's not going to be easy for a guy to walk into my life and for me to just allow God to give up his seat and for him to sit down again. I, I think that's never going to happen because of how I'm building my relationship with God. So, Number one is my relationship with God. This is like, you know, going back to the question of how can you be, what what is the beauty of singlehood is number one, you can actually focus and zone in and really dig deep on your personal relationship with God. Because right now he's the only man in my life that I really want to invest myself in. I mean, there's my brother and there's my dad and they're my friends, but this is a different kind of intimacy that I can only have with God. So that's number one. And number two is my love for myself. You know, um, I'm really taking this time to learn about myself. And I love that statement of date yourself. <laughs> like we date guys and we, you know, we go, yeah, we go out on dates with other people. But do we go out on dates with ourselves? Like, are you content? Are you not shy about going into a movie theater and just watching a movie by yourself? Are you not shy about just sitting down in a coffee shop and reading a book by yourself? I used to be so uncomfortable with doing that, but now I I love my company. (laughs) It sounds so lame, but honestly, if you don't love your company, I feel bad for you because you're going to be stuck with yourself for the rest of your life. And so if you don't enjoy time with you, it's going to suck. So if you don't have someone right right now, you know, a special someone right now, date yourself. Get to know yourself. What are the things that I like to do? What are the things that get me mad? What are the things that get me upset? What are the things that get me creative? Because when you know these things, it will be much easier for a guy to pursue you. Because if you know what you like, then he knows what to give. If you know what you don't like, then you can tell him straight up. Dude, I really don't like that, actually. Oh, yeah, great. Having... A better understanding of yourself will actually be better for the relationship that you're going to have in the future. It's going to make so many things much clearer. You know, us girls, we have so many credentials for the perfect guy. Like, we have a whole resume full of, he has to be this, his accomplishments have to be this, he has to have a good relationship with his dad, like, (laughs) or maybe it's just me. Yes, I have a full page of, like, all of the things that I want to see in my future guy. Yes, why not? you don't i'm shook but yes i'm so caught up you know with this perfect guy in my head and somebody said this on platform i forgot who it was but they said you are so fixated on this idea of the perfect guy you know of the perfect husband but are you the perfect wife like stop finding the perfect husband and start being the perfect wife. Oof. That hit me. Disclaimer, you're never going to be perfect. That's the reality of it all. But it's not bad to have standards. 
And if we aim for perfection, we will get closer and closer to that, but we will never get to it. It's kind of like, you know, those math um, slopes, the one that never approaches the axis. Anyway, so yeah, that completely shifted my perspective of like, oh my gosh, I am expecting so much from this future guy, but I should be more focused on expecting that much of the future me or working on those standards for myself as a person first. So I have two lists. I have one list of the you know, the guy that I want to be with in the future. God wants us to tell him the desires of our heart. God wants us to tell him the things that we want to see in 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 our future life. You know, he's like, tell, tell me your wants. Ask me, he says, ask me. God wants you to ask him. Why are you not going to ask him? You receive not because you ask not. That's what he said in the Bible. So I'm going to ask and my list Yes, definitely asked. But I have a second list, which is actually me when I'm ready. And I think that's most important. Because it doesn't matter what the guy is like. If you're not ready to honor that blessing that God has given you, if you're not ready to treat the guy right, if you're not ready to be, you know, the girl that you are supposed to be for this guy, there's, there's, there's really no point even if he's here already so in my list i write down stuff like i hope to be secure in myself you know fully confident that i know who i am and i love who i am it doesn't matter what anybody has to say i want to be living in a country that i know i'm gonna be in for a while that's very important because i know i'm gonna love to travel when i get older or when this pandemic is over and I would hate it if I'm in a place that I'm not supposed to like stay in and the guy's from there and like he's not planning to leave, you know, like stuff like that. Very important. Anyway, you have your list. I have my list. But I would really encourage you that at this time of waiting, you don't just sit and wait. Because faith, which is great, you know, faith in in, in God eventually providing with you that that perfect guy that husband that that blessing that's great to have faith but faith without action or faith without works is dead and so while you are being faithful you better be working at it and what's beautiful is working at you eventually when you are with that guy you know to become one you become a union If you are working on one part of the union and if you're bettering that one part of the union, when eventually you come together, you are actually bettering that relationship. Even without the guy, you are already working on that relationship. I love that. And you know, every 11-11, one of my bestest friends, Joy, told me this. She said, every time the clock strikes 11-11, I pray for my future husband. And I don't even have a name for him yet, but I just pray for him. And now she is dating a great, absolutely amazing guy. And it's like, wow, you definitely see that God honored all of her little wishes, of all her little desires, all of her little quirks that she was like, God, maybe he can have this. Yes, he has it. Like, he's like, honestly, amazing. But she was praying for him even before he walked into her life. And so I do that too. Every time I see the clock at 11.11, I pray for my future husband. I'm like, Lord, I don't know where he is right now. And I don't know what he's doing. And I don't know what his name is or how he looks. But I just pray that you may um, comfort him right now. I don't know. It's, It's all different sometimes. Sometimes it's like, I pray that you may give him strength. I pray that you may give him sleep right now if he's struggling to sleep. Like little things like that, you know. The person doesn't have to have a name for you to pray for him. And if he's going to be my husband, okay, fine. I'll pray for him. Why not? Anyway, (laughs) I feel like I'm like really going in depth here. But yeah, I have two lists. The me list and the him list. And as when I talk about the him list or the the list of like the future guy that I want to be with. 
there was this one thing that my dad said he said don't waste you know the guys that you have liked don't waste those feelings don't waste those experiences that you had with them and not even just the guys that you like but just the guys that you like in general like as friends why do you like this guy as a friend um why does this guy interest you um why did you say no to this guy uh why did it not work out with him ask yourself those questions and those little attributes like oh it's because he's like this or he's like that or i liked it that like he fixed his hair every time he saw me or i liked it when he would dress up or i liked it when he wanted to ask my dad for like certain things like that think about those people that you have been involved with people that you have just sparked your interest people that you have liked people that you have not liked and kind of make your list a bit more detailed you know write it down like oh jim had really nice eyes or rick had um, a great sense of humor and that's kind of how i i made this list of the future guy you know i i put those names down and i said oh lord i want him i want this guy to have rick's humor and i want him to have jim's eyes and i want him to have um jesse's voice something like that and it makes it a bit more specific which which i think is nice because it's one thing to say oh yes i have a good voice or it's one thing to say he has to be funny but you have a specific kind of humor you like a specific kind of voice you know so make it a bit more detailed and when you ask god specifically i'm telling you he answers specifically and uh, another important thing of a list is non-negotiables you have to write down the things that you are not going to compromise on at all. And those are going to be, you know, determining factors of if this guy is really the guy for you. Because there are certain things that you should not ever compromise on, and those are your values and your beliefs. There there are certain things in your life that you're like, oh my god, I've had so much experience with this, I'm not going to play around with this. And I believe that those are signs, you know, when a guy is able to honor that, your non-negotiables. So write those down. And then write down the things that you just, you know, kind of want. Like, I want him to be taller than me. (laughs) I would love him to be taller than me. It's not like he has to be taller than me, but I would love it. I'm revealing too much now, I think. (laughs) But that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. You have to focus on your relationship with God, your maker, your creator. You know, having a good relationship with God is the basis of everything. And when you have a good relationship with this, with this God that provides everything and reveals everything and makes everything work out for good, everything else you don't have to worry about. So that's the most important. And then number two is working on yourself. Having a good understanding of who you are and what you bring to the table in a relationship is very important to understand before even getting into a relationship. My dad said, don't learn how to use the parachute when you jump off the plane. You don't understand the mechanics of a relationship once you're already in a relationship. No, you study it, you learn about it, you work on it even before you're in a relationship so that when you jump off the plane, you already know how to use that parachute and you ain't going to fall and break your back. (laughs) And then number three, obviously, is working on your relationship with a guy. And you don't need to know his name. You don't need to know where he's from. you You don't need to know who he is yet to be able to work on that relationship with him. To be able to work on the things that you will eventually encounter when you are eventually with him. So that looks like your boundaries, knowing your, what your boundaries are, knowing what you're looking for, knowing what you're not willing to compromise on. Those are so important. And most importantly, knowing how to love him. And I love this verse from 1 Corinthians 13 verse 2 and it says i if i have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if i have faith that can move mountains but do not have love i have nothing you can be the nicest person in the world 
you can be the sweetest person in the world you can be the most desirable most beautiful person in the entire world but if you don't have love and if you don't know how to love all the way then i believe you have nothing because love makes the world go round so that is personally the beauty of singleness it's knowing how to love all the way even if you're only halfway in that path <laughs> i'd also like to take this time to thank our sponsor squarespace so if you don't know what squarespace is squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can run your business sell your products or market your brand even if you are a creative like myself squarespace is the perfect place to share your stories to share your work and it's a great avenue actually to monetize your art as well you know as a creative we also need to earn as an artist you need to earn as well and your work and the amount of you know time and effort that you put into it why not learn how to market that as well and sell it as a product or you can even allow people to buy subscriptions for weekly or monthly content and it is honestly a great place to generate community you know i wish i had my squarespace website up and running before i had my webinar which happened a few months ago if you guys want to check out the recording of my webinar and buy it you can actually buy it i'll put the link down below but i wish i had squarespace before i did my webinar because it would actually allow me to email you guys all at once like all of those are automated it will allow me to like just put all of my information out there where you guys can see it allows for my integrations of my social media platforms to be so simple like my facebook my twitter my instagram all there oh <sighs> yeah i wish i had squarespace back then because it would have made my life so much easier but anyway, we have no more time to lose because I am working on my website right now on Squarespace and you have the chance to go check it out. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Hanukathleen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So yes, go check it out. I'm so excited to see what you guys come up with and click the link in my bio to get a free trial. Not my bio, my description box. This is not ig stories <laughs> anyway thank you so much to squarespace for sponsoring this video i've loved working with you guys this year and i'm excited to see what everybody else will come up with it's already super duper late it's like 1 a.m already and if i don't stop now i'm gonna say something that i will regret because you know it's already sunny hours sunny <laughs> senti hours and sappy girl hours you know you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying We gotta stop this now while we still have a chance before I say something stupid. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you got something out of it and I hope that you were encouraged, you know, Bernadette, even if it's just you that is encouraged from this video. I hope that you remember that you are not alone and that there is so much beauty to being single. It is not something to be ashamed of. It is not something to be afraid of. It is something that you can own. It is something that you can actually enjoy, you know? It is not something that you have to get rid of as if it's like a stain on your shirt. No, embrace that stain. Make it tie-dye. Make it part of who you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm single and I'm loving it because I freaking love going on dates with myself. So yeah, eat on that tita. Don't have to make me feel bad about not having a boyfriend. <laughs> anyway that is the end of this video of this podcast thank you so much for listening if you guys have any ideas of what podcasts you want me to do in the future please email me at quantuswithhanna at gmail.com basically just say hey my name is blank i'm from blank and this time can we have quanta or can we make quanta about blah 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 and then give a brief explanation of why and then we'll talk about it in the future. So I hope that you guys enjoyed watching and listening. And I'll see you guys in my next podcast. I love you so much. See you later. <laughs>